Oh, man, the New York Knicks. Who would be crazy enough to think that the Knicks would be in position at Christmas time where they are? Right now, a team that's played fantastic over the last two weeks. They've been 8-0 as a team throughout the last two weeks. They lose their first game on Wednesday night in two and a half weeks. Julius Randle's playing good basketball. Jalen Brunson's been as dominant of a force to a team since he's taken the reins as the point guard of the New York Knicks. R.J. Barrett is playing better basketball. He's actually shooting 76%. At the free throw line, Quentin Grimes looks like he's a player. And reasons why the Knicks decided not to trade him for Donovan Mitchell. We're seeing these players start to develop. Before Obi Toppin got hurt, he was playing pretty good basketball. Nick fans have something to talk about now. New York basketball could be back. Now, winning a championship? No. Making the playoffs and making a statement in the playoffs? Maybe winning a round? It could be possible. Having a point guard like Jalen Brunson can change everything for an offense. A guy that gets everybody involved, can shoot, can rebound for his size. It's been fantastic. It's been fun to watch. And I get the point guard that the Knicks have been thriving for for decades. Not just years, decades. And Jalen Brunson, we knew he could space the floor. We knew he could shoot and pass very well, but we were concerned about his size, especially on the defensive side, and driving to the hoop. And that has have not been significant flaws in his game this year at all. He's been able to win inside with finesse. He's been able to score inside. And he's a great leader for this team. And even when the Knicks were struggling before that, he was not the issue. He was spacing the floor very well. The guys are just not hitting shots. Now guys are hitting shots. You mentioned Quentin Grimes really developing before that injury he suffered against Chicago on Monday, he was playing very well. Emmanuel Quigley's played well. And R.J. Barrett's shooting a little bit better, too. He's shooting some corner threes nicely. And free throws definitely improved from his first two years of his career. Finally shooting 76%. Now, obviously, he still has to be a little bit better with decision-making with the ball. But, again, that's a lot of the Knicks this year. But the biggest thing with the Knicks, they're one of the few teams. I think there's only five teams in the league right now, top 10 in both offensive and defensive efficiency right now. The Knicks are one of those teams right now. And they've been very impressive in the perimeter defense, especially. Very impressive. And that's what Tom Thibodeau the staple of. It's been fun to watch. It really has been. And you sit here today and you don't know what this team's going to be in the second half. You don't know what this team's going to do in the new year. But right now, if you're a Nick fan, you should be very excited mm-hmm. because you have something to cheer about. You have something when it's not going to Madison Square Garden watching the Rangers win or compete. You actually have a basketball team that's competitive, that can play in the Eastern Conference, compete in the Eastern Conference. So when you sit back and you wonder in the new year and say, Hey, hockey and the Rangers and the Islanders and football, it could be the end of the Jets and the Giants. You have something to watch in January and February when it comes to basketball and hockey. Because you have the Islanders, the Rangers, the Knicks, and the Nets. It's been great basketball. And even for the Nets, for all the crazy circus genre, you talk about music, it's it's genre. Well, with the Nets, there's so many genres For this organization. There's the clown. There's the stupidity. There's the absolute dumb. And I guess you could say winning. But at least this team has found a way to win. At least this team understands how to win. Maybe having two top players at their respectable positions. Or maybe just Ben Simmons playing good basketball right now. Ben Simmons has been really the surprise of the Brooklyn Nets. And I know everybody's going to look at his numbers. They don't really stick out to you. Eight points a game, six rebounds, six assists, and he only averages 11 shots. What makes Ben Simmons special is he does everything good but score. Everything good. He could pass. He could ball handle. He can rebound, he can block, and he can play and defend multiple positions. That's why they made that trade for James Harden. They don't need offense from this kid. He's making a lot of money. He should be scoring at least 15 points a game, making like 36, 37 million a year. It doesn't matter. As long as he's healthy and he's productive, it doesn't matter because you're getting 30 some odd points from Kevin Durant, and they're getting close to 28, 29 points from Kyrie Irving, and they're winning because of it. And they have a player. That need be when they need to put them on the Greek freak. When they need to put them on the best player on any respectable team that they're playing against, he could defend them. 
And we saw that against the Warriors, too. Now, granted, the Warriors aren't playing great right now, but that is still a prolific offense. And Ben Simmons was hovering around the perimeter throughout the game, and they ended up winning in a blowout, winning over 30 points. If I were a Nets fan, I would even be fine with just, like, 12 points per game. And then if he's elite as a passer and elite as a defender, I'll take it in a, a, any day because that's what they brought him in for. And they're getting other bench production finally now, a little bit more. Not Still not great. Joe Harris, Seth Curry, guys like that playing a little better as well to help that. And Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they're still playing their usual selves. Now, again, the Nets still, can they find something with this interim coach route with Jock Vaughn? They found a little bit, but again, it's still going to be tough in a tough Eastern Conference to elevate themselves other than probably over fourth right now, which is where they stand at the moment. The Eastern Conference very bunched up kind of four through nine. It started to level out a little bit between the 10 through 12 teams, the other play-in teams, but the Nets definitely have a shot too if they can keep some level of stability. They just got to avoid some other drama and other circus stuff that they happen to have to have in the beginning of the season because they have some depth pieces now playing well if these other starters could actually keep their head on straight. I'm look at you, Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons mainly. You go back and forth with both teams, both New York teams, and you wonder where these teams are going to be in the second half. We don't know. But what we do know is the Knicks finally have an elite point guard on their team in Jalen Brunson, and the Nets finally are getting something from a player that they thought they were going to get nothing from this year in Ben Simmons. So it's something to be happy about. Santa Claus gave us a nice Christmas gift this year for the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets, and that is a winning mentality. So thank you to Santa Claus. As far as the Giants are concerned, they won a game that nobody thought they were going to win. A lot of people thought they were going to win another game for this year, and they have a good chance of making the playoffs. The NFC is wide open. The Cowboys losing last week against the Jaguars. The Giants played a good game. They made a lot of good defensive plays. Their offense was blah. You didn't need much because the Commanders are not a high-flying offense, especially with Taylor Henneke as your starting quarterback. So you try to look at teams that are going to challenge the Giants now in the NFC, and there maybe is two or three. That's it. The Giants are going to have a very good chance of making the playoffs after beating the Commanders there. As yeah. a matter of fact, I think it's over 70%. It's pretty much a shoe in if they win this week. Two other things that they actually got lucky on. For the Colts, Jonathan Taylor is now out for the season. The Giants' biggest weakness all year has been stopping the run. I know Zach Moss played well last week against the Vikings, but still, I don't expect that to happen again. And then Deion Jackson's been alright. The other news that came out this week, that Jalen Hurts might miss the rest of the regular mm-hmm. season, too. Now, the Eagles might have played back backups anyway if they clinch the number one seed, but that pretty much solidified that Jalen Hurts probably won't be playing because odds are the Eagles are not going to lose all three of their games and Dallas is going to win all three of their games to make it an NFC East tough scenario there. So the Giants kind of got lucky in that regard. I don't think they'll beat the Vikings this week. I think the Vikings will be too tough of a test, but the Colts and the Eagles, those are definitely winnable games. And the only way I think they would miss is at this point, now that they beat the Commanders, if they lose out. I didn't expect them to beat the Commanders. Their defense wasn't playing well in previous weeks, especially with all the secondary injuries. The Washington receiving core with Samuel healthy now and Jahan Dotson who continued to play well against the Giants and McLaurin like that's a tough core to stop but they did that and they stopped the run which they haven't been able to do in recent weeks Brian Robinson had a couple big carries but it wasn't like a consistent running game and that's what you'd like to see for the offense yeah not much but Saquon came along in the fourth quarter and that's good to see I think when you look at the big picture and where both of these teams are going I think the Jets are more talented than the Giants but the one thing that the Jets are in position where they can could fail is they're in a very difficult division. You have to contend with Miami for the next couple of years. They're young. Buffalo, young. The Patriots, where as long as Bill Belichick is there and he's breathing, it's not going to be easy. They're in a bad predicament, and Joe Douglas needs to figure out this quarterback position problem. It is a big problem. It's been a big problem for this franchise for 50 years. Maybe Joe Namath put a hex on this team, but something needs to give on this. The team needs to figure this out because Zach Wilson will probably not be here in five years. Wes will be analyzing him in the CFL. Yeah, or he might never play football again. He has a very rich family, you know. His family owns JetBlue. That's ironic. (laughs) The Giants, win or lose, the Giants weren't expected to do anything. It's all gravy now for the Giants. It's going to be the offseason where Dable's going to stamp his name to this roster, stamp his name to this organization. Joe Shane, too. They're going to have some money to spend. They're going to have the fourth most salary cap space. Only the Bears, the Patriots, and the Falcons will have more. Maybe they could take Zach Wilson. That would be funny. (laughs) All right, Speedy. Three for all picks of the week. Well, we'll start with the Cincinnati Bengals at the New England Patriots. 
Patriots. Mm -hmm. So actually, I'm going to take the upset here. I'm actually going to go with the Patriots. This feels like a very big redemption game after the way they lost last week. Uh, Bill Belichick coming back with a vengeance. And the Bengals, I think they're too hot. I think they're due to lose a game at some point. They didn't look great against the Buccaneers in that first half. And I think the Patriots can expose some of those aspects. Back-to-back -back road games for the Bengals. Looking ahead to the Bills. I could see this being a trap. I'm going to take the Patriots here on the under. I like Joe Burrow in this game. I think Jamar Chase will have a breakout game. The Patriots like to stop the best player on the field. Bill Belichick likes to shut down the best option Joe Burrow has, but there's a lot of options, and Joe Mixon could be back this week. I think he'll be able to run. I think that this team is going to be able to run against his defense, a la the New York Jets. I think the Bengals are high-flying offense. Yes, they lost Hendrickson for a significant amount of time, broken wrist. He could be out for, until the playoffs. He could play with a broken wrist in the playoffs. They're missing some pieces defensively. I still think this is a good enough defense and a more pristine offense where they can shut down and beat up the New England Patriots. I would take the Bengals on the over. The Seattle Seahawks at the Kansas City Chiefs. Over under for this is 49 and a half. I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one. Uh, they're at home. I, Seattle matches up well in a couple aspects. I think Geno Smith runs the ball well, but I don't know if Kenneth Walker is still not 100% against a top five run defense. No Tyler Lockett. The Chiefs, I think, will be able to run the ball actually better than expected. Jarek McKinnon's been nice. Travis Kelsey, I think, has a big game in this one as well. Seattle always stinks against tight ends. So I think the Seahawks keep it close for three quarters and then the Chiefs pull away. Give me Kansas City on the over. Yeah, I got Kansas City. I, I think Kansas City's going to be able to run against the Seahawks, and being that the Kansas City Chiefs are at home, Patrick Mahomes will have a 300-yard game. He'll throw two or three touchdowns, and he'll be able to make the plays that he needs to make in the open field, including using his legs. Give me the Chiefs on the over to All right, last one. The Washington Commanders and the San Francisco 49ers, a very low one here. 37 and a half. I'm going to take the 49ers, but I do think it'll be closer than expected. I, I think Washington's defense will put up a fight. I think it'll be a little harder for the Niners to be able to run the ball with Christian McCaffrey. I think this is his first kind of down game in a San Francisco uniform. Where I think San Francisco could attack Washington is in the slot areas. I think Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, even McLeod maybe one of those guys. Or even McCaffrey receiving, I think, will have a big game. And then the defense, I think, will just do the rest. So I'm going to take the Niners, and I'm actually going to take the under. Yeah, I got the Niners in this game, too. Uh, Purdy looks like he's going to make the plays that he needs to make, and the commanders aren't any good. They lost against the Giants on Sunday Night Football, and I don't think they're going to be any good against a San Francisco defense that is just elite. Top of the top. If they can't handle the Giants defense, which is not even close. What do you think San Francisco is going to do? I don't think it's anywhere close. I think it's embarrassing. But I have San Francisco on the under as well.